what is up joe crew it is me joe crew dmd and today i got a deck profile for you on blue pepper kaido kaido sama what it all right so blue purple kaido is wild this guy's been topping tournaments all over the place so i looked at a couple of lists and i looked at the cards that i really like to play and i put them together in a list I was jamming this list with Brian Samuels. If you guys don't know, one of the DBS national champions, Brian Samuels has been playing a little bit of One Piece with me and some other friends here and there. And the guy's nasty at card games. And he showed me how cool this deck was. So I was like, I gotta slap this thing together. Put my spin on it with some of the new film cards. All right, so let's take a look at this leader. This is the alt art blue purple Kaido leader. He starts with four life. And basically his effect is once per turn, when you KO a character card, you ramp a Dawn untapped. Yeah, so this dude, you KO a character card and then you just put an untapped Dawn from your Dawn deck in your cost area, which is pretty, pretty wild. So he's ramping you untapped Dawn. There's a lot of purple effects that just straight up KO cards. So when you KO those cards, you still get the untapped Dawn. So really, really strong leader. The four life you gotta be careful with if somebody's gonna rush you down, but you usually have time to stabilize with this guy and play very defensively and really, really remove people's boards and make the most of your turns. So first I'm gonna start going through the film starter cards that I decided to put in. Uh, I put four of the searchers, just so you can make sure that you see some of the cards that you wanna see. He's a 2K counter and when you play him, you search top five for a film film card and you place the rest at the bottom so kind of your basic searcher i'm playing four of those and then i got two of i think this is ann or amy it might be ann i can't remember her name but anyway if you have less dawn than your opponent you can put two dawn in rest mode in your cost area activate main by switching her to rest mode so you, when she's in play you just switch her to rest mode and if you have less dawn than your opponent which is likely in this deck because you have so many dawn minus effects you just get two untapped dawn so really strong card but you want to play her at the right time and the time you want to play her is is usually the same time that you're playing Girdu Tesoro. So Girdu Tesoro, the man that means business, has come in for business. You play him for five, he's a 6K body, and when this dude swings, you Dawn minus two and draw two cards. That's crazy. That is absolutely wild. So much value in a deck that just gets you Dawn basically for free over and 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 over like a Dawn in my cost area. This dude, that's all he's gonna do. He's just gonna get you draw cards and then she is gonna get you Dawn because you're gonna Dawn minus two, be under your opponent and then boom, boom, Dawn, Dawn. You just rest this girl and you get more Dawn. So it's like, no, it's like nothing happened. It's like nothing even ever happened. So this guy is super, super strong. It's especially for his draw power and he's just a 6k body but he doesn't have any counter so i'm just running two next we've got uta uta is a diva and she has a way better voice than me my voice is trash when it comes to singing but she's got a really good voice i heard it in some of the previews i'm so excited to see this movie but this card is really strong actually on block if you dawn minus one you get to rest one of their character cards five cost or less so your opponent really has to play weird when this is on board in order to deal with this blocking and resting a card it's essentially a double block if she's in play and you're swinging into your opponent you really want to figure out how to rest her or do something to her so that you're not going to be swinging into her and getting two of your cards rested because she's going to block the card that she's blocking and she's going to rest a card that's in play so extremely extremely strong card and playing four beautiful looking card and has 1k counter power so really really strong thank you so much uta and then of course we got two of the kid killer might as well just look at this look at this shiny thing on his arm this shiny thing on his arm was designed specifically for killing kid this guy is crazy he's at eight costs you play him down and then on your turn when you can swing with him basically you're gonna dawn minus four get rid of four of your dawn and then you rest two of your opponent's character cards six cost or less so you're basically saying all right i'm gonna swing into whatever i want you got blockers sorry go to sleep take a nap i'm gonna be coming in big time bop kid on the head this guy is not messing around you can see look 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 how close all his teeth are together that means he's here for business but no seriously this card is really really strong it's 10k power which is big and he rests two cards six cost or less There's, there really aren't many blockers i can't think of any blockers that are more than six energy or oh, maybe the kid from the starter deck is a seven cost blocker but other than that this guy is just dunking he just slam dunk he, he takes kid he drives him up to the hoop 360 degree roundhouse slam dunk shadow the backboard it's all over the floor and he's just left standing there with kid on the ground bleeding out of his neck and that's how it goes so you want to be this guy's really really strong and it's good to search these off of your film starter search this is a three cost removal it's basically if you trigger this i think you get an untapped dawn if you trigger this 
can't remember exactly you can look it up um also i'll have the website for the one piece dev site in the description you can always click there and check that out um if you don minus two when you play this card you can ko a character card five costs or less which is really great with kaido because you just pay three for one don basically even when you're minusing two you're still getting one of those back so really really value value card so yeah essentially you're really only don minusing one because when you ko something you're just going to get one back on tap so this is essentially costing you two and you're really only don minusing one in kaido because when you ko that card you're just getting a don back Get the dome back with this cardo. So those are it for the film cards. Next, I'm gonna go into the cards from the starter decks. We got Trafalgar Law, who's doing the rule. But yeah, I'm just playing three of these. I mean, it's basically just a negate. Uh, you know, one cost blocker. They're gonna have to deal with it. You're making them exchange energy to do something to this guy, either to get rid of him or they're just gonna be swinging into him and he's just gonna eat a hit. So one cost blockers are really, really strong and blue has one cost blockers purple does not so that's why we play this next we got four who's who's i mean a play set of who's who's in this deck is just it's it's kind of good right because you know you're just paying three dom minus one and then you ko a three or less so you're essentially just getting you're essentially paying two for this guy so this guy's really really strong i mean you can essentially just guarantee you're gonna get kaido's effect during your turn if they have a three cost and you just play who's who you just ko something and get that untapped dawn so very very strong card and it triggers from life but you're not going to get the dawn effect on your opponent's turn because kaido's effect is only on your turn not on your opponent's turn so if you trigger this guy and ko something you still remove whatever you're removing but you're not going to get that ramp dawn Next, I'm running three Onigashima. Honestly, I don't think this card is even that necessary in this deck. You just ramp so much. Sometimes it's just a dead card in hand. But when you are playing the big bombs, which I'm going to get into soon, sometimes it is good to have this crazy flying island that just ramps you a dawn. You know, it's a good three cost investment that's just going to net you so much value over the course of the game. Nothing wrong with having something that just says, hey, get a free dawn every turn. Get an extra dawn. That's value. That's called absolute value. So Onigashima, mad value. I think it might be fine at two. And honestly, Honestly, you might even be able to cut it with how much ramp effect there is in this deck, but I think it's a safe play to have three of them. And if you have too many in hand, you can just discard them off the queen effect. Uh, three love love beam this card is really strong right you know hand size is just a thing in every card game um and this is going to give you 4k power and if you play it right when you counter with this you can draw a card so if you have three or less cards in hand when you counter with this you're drawing a card so just really strong card to give you defensive power and when you're in a pinch you get another card in your hand so value town for queens queen's just too good it's just a draw two discard one on play and you can get rid of dead cards in your hand it's a six thousand power blocker which means he just blocks leader swings right if somebody swings lead and they are not donned up he's just gonna block it and nothing's gonna happen so very very strong card to have of this a, a blocker this powerful that also draws you cards and helps you filter your hand the queen uh, look at this. This, is, this is one of the main waifus in the set also you got to respect the queen wife next we got the starter king this guy you play him for six uh, uh dawn minus one and you ko four cost or less so very strong effect especially in this deck because you're just getting that dawn right back you can even pay one of the rested dawn for the effect and then you're just getting an active dawn back so he's essentially only costing you five which very very strong to pay five for a 7k that's moving something it's just like that's a really strong thing and then we got the nine drop kaido nine drop kaido is also crazy because you dawn minus five and you ko something six costs or less and again you're just going to get a dawn back so he's essentially costing you eight and that dawn is going to be active and then he gains rush also so you're going to be right back at six if you have onigashima you ramp back to seven in the next turn you're going to be charging two dawn anyway so it's just it's he's basically not negging you at all in this deck it's it's absolutely wild the amount of value you can get off of this dude I think he actually might be better than running the Onigashima. So I might cut one Onigashima and add a third one of these. This card is just so very, very strong, but um, also no counter power. So got to be careful with that. And then I'm running three Bolo Breath. This could probably be four also. You know, the one cost for 4K pounder power is a really good exchange and you're just Dawn minusing one. And in this deck, Dawn minus just like doesn't matter because you have so many ways to get your Dawn back. So very, very strong to run this card. I think 
four could probably be good also, but I've been comfortable with three. And then of course we got the main set stuff. We got Hankok Swan. Hankok Swan. One of the best cards in the game. One of the absolute best cards in the game. I would run four, but I only have three alt arts. So there's no way that I'm going to play four of these. But this is really the only card in the game that I know of. Correct me if I'm wrong. Let me know in the comments. But this is the only card I know of in the game that has the potential to draw for you on your turn and your opponent's turn. That's crazy. That's very, very, very strong. And you know why she can do that? because she's beautiful. Oh, my man. She's really, really strong card. I think, you know, the versatility and draw power and just how dang good it looks, right? She's a blocker and she can swing. She's base 5K, only four cost. And Dawn X1, she's gonna draw you a card either offensively or defensively. So I think this card's absolutely amazing. If I had another one, I would play another one. I think it looks amazing. I'd be happy just having it in my hand so I can look at it. This is just really, really good looking card. 1K power also. And look at her. Look at her leaning over like that saying i can do whatever i want because i'm beautiful and she's always the one saving luffy you'd expect like luffy would be saving the damsel in distress but she's not a, in distress she's definitely a damsel but she's never in distress and she's always saving luffy so thank you so much hancock swan we wouldn't even have the story if it wasn't for you you know getting the key to ace's cuffs all this stuff it's just what an absolute mvp card and drawing on both turns that's kind of crazy that there's a card that does that so don't forget to respect the Hancock. And then, of course, we got the handsome king. When this guy comes in, he goes, mm, you touch my tra la la. Bring in my ding ding dong. And as soon as he says ding ding dong, he kills a two cost or less and a three cost or less. So this guy's removing two bodies. You got two blockers on board. Handsome, handsome king says, mm, you touch my tra la la. And then they're just gone. That's it. You just dawn minus two. And then boom, boom, two of them are KO'd. One of those dawn is coming back in active mode because of Kaido's effect. So just insanely strong card, extremely handsome guy, and a 7K body. So this is essentially costing you six because you're getting that dawn back on KO, but you do have to pay seven for it. And then you have this handsome king with his ruffled shirt and ring ding 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 dong attitude on the board so i play two of these guys and then the 10 drop kaido 10 drop kaido is wild you just clear an entire board and this comes back so fast from the minus six right because you minus six you're at four you're going back to six the next turn if you have only gosh you you're going to seven if you have one of your little girls on board that you can rest to get two more you're going right back to nine and it's just there's there's so much value you know you kill something else and then boom back to 10 dawn like you can get back to 10 dawn the turn after you play this guy and he's got this shiny tattoo on his arm i mean that is that is that looks really good that looks really good so i think two honestly i think one is probably fine but i think two is good it's just a really strong card but you have to be careful playing this card because you're paying 10 for it which means if you pay 10 for it that means you're tapping out and if you're tapping out that means you have no energy to defend so you're probably going to be taking some hits the next turn but your opponent's board is going to be cleared. So it's only going to be from leader hits. So you want to make sure you're not in the potential for lethal when you play this guy or else you're dead. But on the next turn, you're swinging in with a 12K and you have your leader swing. So, you know, you could do a 12K and a 15K attack on the next turn. So really, really monstrous, monstrous, strong, strong card. And then we got the four Doflamingos. This is Rockstar Dofi coming in. You can see him listening to Metallica and swinging in on his strings. And just this guy is three costs. You play him, you search top five and you put them on the top and bottom of any order. I'm pretty sure you have to put them either all the top or all the bottom. That's how Scry works in Dragon Ball. So I'm assuming that's how Scry works in this game. But being able to visualize those top five and set up your draws in this deck is insane, right? Like looking at top cards and just moving them around is so insanely valuable. You can use him to see if it's safe to play your searcher. So you can pay three, Scry top five, grab, put your Douglas bullet up there and then play your searcher guy and you search out your Douglas and then the rest go to the bottom or you can see oh maybe i don't want to i just want to set up the douglas to draw into him and then i'll wait to draw that and then rearrange there's just there's so much you can do with this and your searcher so really really valuable card to be able to see those top five so that's the list that's the deck profile i hope you guys enjoyed it i think this deck is really really strong and really fun to play definitely i would just say actually probably the strongest deck in the game right now i think this and kid are the contenders for the top spot but this has the new support and new supports always going to be stronger so this kind of has the bullet that that answers the kid and if you play this deck right and you see your curve the your opponent just can't really set up and you have so much defense and so much oppressive pressure that also has removal skills that it's just a really really versatile deck and you want to at least know how to play this deck so if you run into it you know how to play against it
Now I did happen to get some one piece promo packs that I'm going to be giving away. So if you use the hashtags in the description below, it's one piece, one piece card game, OPTCG and one piece TCG, Joe crew and Holy hexagon. You put those hashtags in a YouTube short, a reel or a TikTok, and send it to me and make a commercial for the one piece card game. Whoever makes the best commercial for the one piece card game, I am going to be sending these promo packs to, and there may be multiple winners, who knows, but go ahead and do that. Send me the commercial, get people hyped up for this game, make something cool and win yourself some promo packs and probably some extra Joku treasure. If I didn't know what came in an exciting package from Joku, I am a dentist. I can't end without doing a dental tooth tip. My dental tooth tip to you would be, did you know your canine is the longest tooth in the mouth and it's actually where your teeth transition from anterior to posterior. So your canine is your last anterior tooth. It's also called the cuspid because it only has one cusp, which I made my license plate cusp kid when I lived out in Arizona and was in dental school, but it is the cuspid and it's the only one cusp tooth and your first canine is tooth number six. I love sixes, so I love canines. So that's a little education about the anatomy of your canine. Also longest tooth in the mouth and it's pretty cool. If I had one, I would probably make an earring or a necklace out of it. Thank you so much and I'll see you guys next time. You gotta make like uh like like clicking make clicking sounds. Yeah. Oh, 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 shit! Did I hear face? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Did you just make that?